This took me a while to admit, but there's a selfish part of it for me that I, you know, I had never, I had never netted six figures in a year before at that point in my life. And so there was a goal of mine and I was willing to sack and I, I, I was willing to sacrifice a lot for that. I didn't think it would be my marriage. I didn't think it would be my family. I thought it would be some time and some hard work. Like, Whoa. and so that's where like we make this terrible mistake. But if like, if your business is encroaching on your time, like in a substantial way for a sustained period of time, to me, it's a sign something's wrong in the business that you really got to investigate. Um, and, and so especially, you know, or if you find yourself just working all the time, right? It's not even, it's not even if you just find yourself thinking about business all the time, but if you're actually working all the time and people are telling you, you know, that you're, that you're missing out and you feel like you're missing out, then, then I think you have a, something you need to kind of confront. So you're working with a business owner and they have been, they have been making the money. You know, the money is coming in. They're wildly successful. I know it's, this is something that's happened to you as well. So maybe you want to share your personal story. So on the surface, everything's good. They got a the house, they got the car, they got the promotion, or they have the business that's working. They have the trophy wife and the family and everything that might be considered good in the eyes of Instagram beholders. But under the surface, there is depression, there is anxiety, constant suicidal thoughts, can't sleep at night, there is a next deadline that's coming up, you're at dinner with the family and you have no idea what's been said because so many things are swirling around on you. How do you and Lifeoneer at this stage help such a business owner get to a more fulfilling, less stressful life? How do you do it? Hey guys, welcome to the Boardroom Podcast. Today we're going to be speaking with Jason Wojo about living a fulfilling life as an entrepreneur. This means that you're not burnt out, you're not stressed, you're not feeling like you're overworked, and you feel like your life is in perfect balance and, and harmony. Jason, thank you for coming on to the Boardroom Podcast today. How are you doing? Hey man, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Thanks for having me. I'm having a wonderful time. I'm quite excited to speak to you. I hear that you work for Life Anir. Real quickly, what is Life Anir and who does it help? <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, so Life Anir is all about um, basically empowering business owners, investors, entrepreneurs to create businesses that actually support their life instead of destroy their life. And how do you how do you really mm. create a business to uh, give you the time and financial freedom that you desire? Uh, and, and more importantly, like, what are you actually going to do when you do have the time and the money? And so we really help people figure out what their vision for their life is as well. Like, so it's kind of this, uh, a two pronged approach of like, let's help you figure out your vision for your life. And let's help you create a business to support that vision. I understand. So it's definitely a situation where it's not all about wealth. It's also about sustainable balance. Yeah, man. Living, as we put it's it. so tr Listen, like, and, and. I was that guy who said, like, show me how to make the money and I'll worry about all the other stuff later. I'll worry about life later. And man, if we get into it, mm -hmm. I've had some pretty, pretty hard bumps and bruises along the way because of that attitude. And so I'm much more mm -hmm. now a proponent of creating a business that actually is going to serve you rather than make your life worse. Um, and so that's, yeah, so that I had a lot of hard lessons there. Yeah. But the thing that I want to dive in right quick, really quickly is how do you know that your business is not serving you, but it's actually making your life worse? What does that look like? Yeah, man, it can, it can show up in a few different ways. That's a great question because like, I think some people think that if their business is making great money, then, then they're, then they're good. But, but I, I think more so I see it in three areas. One, yeah. If, if your money is certainly not what you want it to be, if you're a revenue and you're uh, ultimately your profit, right? Like revenue is whatever it is, but profit's really what matters in cash flow. If that is not giving you what you want, you have a problem. But more so than that, I think if you find yourself worrying about business, thinking about business, if you can't disconnect from business, if you're, you know, you're in the shower, you're watching a movie with your spouse, you're talking with your kids and you're like in the back of your mind thinking about work all the time. Like I think it's a, I think it's a sign something's wrong. Now, to be fair, mm -hmm. like business is your baby, right? Like, so this is, this is something that, you know, you care a lot about and I get it. But if like, if your business is encroaching on your time, like in a substantial way for a sustained period of time, to me, it's a sign something's wrong in the business that you really got to investigate. Um, and, and so especially, you know, or if you find yourself just working all the time, right? It's not even, it's not even if you just find yourself thinking about business all the time, but if you're actually working all the time and people are telling you, 
you know, that you're, that you're missing out and you feel like you're missing out, then, then I think you have a, something you need to kind of confront. If it's encroaching on your time persistently, then it means that something is wrong. I was, you'll never believe this, but I was watching an anime and in the anime, this office work, a kaishain in Japanese, I think they're called. It said that overwork is one of the classic signs of a failed business plan. It's like a failing business mm. will lead to overwork. Now, it's not failing in the sense that it's going out of business, but failing in the sense that it's not fulfilling. How do we even get to a point where the business becomes a burden and not a blessing? Is it poor management, poor decision making? You know, everybody's going to blame the economies. There's some of that in there. Right, man. You know, I, I think this is going to, this may sound oversimplistic, but I think most people never look at their business like a business, even from the get go, meaning like, you know, most people like, so for instance, like I had a W2 job before this and as a W2 mm -hmm. employee, you have to do all the work. That's what you get paid for. You, you get paid to do the work. And a lot of people mm -hmm. take that mentality of being the solopreneur or being the person that the job, uh, excuse me, the, the business hin hinges around. And so you take that mentality of basically now you're really just self-employed. And so you never really create a business. And, and, you know, and we hear, we hear these kinds of statements all the time when it comes to business owners and, and you know, like, Hey, you, you can't, you can't rely on anybody to do it other than yourself. You want it done right, do it yourself, you know, all these other things. And so I think most business owners create a business that actually, you know, revolves around them. And if, and if they stop working then the business stops working. And so I think to, to fix that, you got to really, there's, there's a, there's a tactical and a strategic side of it, but there's also a mental side to it too. Like, because it, it does feel bizarre and alienating and strange when your business doesn't need you and you can take time off you. And so there's a sense of your identity that kind of becomes stripped away a little bit. Um, and that's, that's not even talking about like the actually how you do it, but you have to mm -hmm. kind of come to grips. Like if you really want a business, it should be able to run without you. Um, to some extent. Yeah. And, and this is, listen, this is a, yeah. you, you don't just wake up one day and your business doesn't rely on you. It's, it's, it's a number of small consecutive steps that eventually get you there. But you, I think if you want to mm -hmm. get, if you really want that freedom in your business, you got, you got to start taking those steps. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with Patrick by David? Yes. Yep. And um, I do not think that it's Andy Grove that wrote the book built to sell. I think Andy Grove wrote Built to Last, but I think Built to Sell is written by another gentleman who works with VCs and um, acquisitions. The, the sentiments that both these gentlemen um, echoed is that whenever you run a business, the less your business relies on you to keep going, to keep functioning, the more valuable your business becomes. And yeah. the idea is also given that if your business can't work without you, in the sense that you need to be there for it to function. It's really not a business. It's a glorified job. I am a startup owner. Let's say I'm a startup. And yep. I'm trying to get my idea out there. It's the first few months. And I want to build a business where whenever I want to go on vacation for a week or two, I can go and the house doesn't burn down. And if I need to take a day off so I can go to my son's soccer game, it can be done and everything goes on. How do I make that business within two, four, five years, I don't know how long you think it should take on average, yeah. and not a job that I have to put in 16, 18 hours every day for several years. How do I, how do I get that business and not the job? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome question. I love this discussion. And so like one, the first thing I also want to just make clear to everybody is like, I do think business is just like life and there are seasons. And so you may be busy for a short period of time, but like we talked about earlier, like if it's a sustained period, then there's, there's a sign that something's wrong under the hood. And so to your question, like, you know, I think if you're a startup business, there's, there's two ways to do this. One is the, is the, is the more of, I should say affordable way, but it's more time and labor intensive. And the other one is more capital intensive. And so most startups that I'm familiar with, unless you're actually getting VC backed funding and, and you have angel investors, things like that, you have to kind of, as the, as, if, as the business founder, you kind of have to pave that path. You're the one in the, you know, you know, out there with the machete, you know, cutting away the brush, learning how the business works. You're testing, you're getting proof of concept. You are, you're learning, you know, you're probably wearing more Better hats than you should be so in your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, but because, cause you can't, uh, you can't afford yet to hire the people that can do it for you well. And so now sure. there's some, 
there's there's some subtlety in here. I want to I don't want to make a blanket statement, but you know, oftentimes you have to get in there to know how to do it right. Um, and so this is where sure. this can also become a curse, though, because you're now when you start off uh, with a with a startup, you're you're used to doing it all. And now letting go of that can be, can, you can kind of create a little bit of um, friction for yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and so, mm -hmm. cause what, what got you the startup isn't necessarily what's going to get you to that next level of business. And the other way is, yeah, you could, you could, you have, you have funding and you have, you've maybe from a previous business or other investors or partners, you have, you have some finances where you can bring those people on board early. That's much less common from my experience. Um, most, at least, you know, in the, in the types of industries that I'm, that I see people and I work with people in, um, you know, I'm not really in tech or anything like that. Um, but the, the challenge is like, so once one of the first steps I think you got to look at, um, in your business is certainly number one, you got to make sure that you, um, have a, have a clear picture for what you're looking for to experience in your life before the business. And what I mean by that is like, let's say for instance, we talked about real estate. Let's say you wanna travel a month or two per year and run your business remotely. Well, you need to structure things in a certain way to do that. And so knowing some of those things in advance will help you ease that transition and get over that bridge. But like knowing it is the first step. The second step I believe is to really start to look at the tasks in your business that are really below your wage. And so once you've, once you, let's say you're in the startup phase, you're, you're burning the midnight oil, you're making some cash, reinvest some of that cash. I'm, I am not a big fan of reinvesting all of it. I think you have to, you have to pay yourself as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then my, my, my preference, depending on the tasks is, is to either get some, some automation software in place for some of the things that can be automated or perhaps a VA. What you're looking for yeah. is the very first step is what are the lowest wage activities that you're doing that you can hire out or use automation for so that you can open up your time. Like I think this is, I don't think it's money that hinders most businesses. I think it's time. And so when you mm -hmm. look at, when you look at business failure, for instance, you'll see, you'll see all kinds of like, you know, purported reasons for failing, like, um, you know, poor plan, d you know, didn't mm -hmm. cash flow issues, d you know, didn't research the market, faulty business model, whatever. All of those, mm -hmm. I think, if you really boil it down, the reason why those failures, which by the way are really symptoms, occur is because the business owner, the founder, did not have enough bandwidth to really do a good job in that area. Because I mean, you know, this man like like having a business can be like you're you're, mul you're you got multiple juggling balls in the air at any one time, and so it's only inevitable that you're going to drop one. And so like you really have to free up your time as a business owner. And so I think the first step to do that is really that automation get rid of the simple thing like, you know, the $20 an hour job uh, mm -hmm. responsibilities that you should not even be touching with a 10 foot pole, like get rid of that stuff first. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of start moving into your highest and best use. You know, the reason why this intrigues me, it's showing me another way to do things because initially I knew about um, hiring for those low budget tasks. So you don't clean your shoes anymore or do the laundry. And if you can yeah. get a chef, you don't cook the meal and you don't go pick up meal and, errands and all of that, because you need to right. do the things that are going to move the needle, as it would put it. But I've had another idea about how to go about it. I was also thinking that we could hire out for the most high income tasks or the ones with the most that bring the most return. And the reason why I say this is because you know that you said that it's not always money that you believe is a restriction of that causes business to fail. A lot of times it's shortage on time. And that can also mean that we all have the same amount of time, but sometimes we don't choose to spend our time doing the right things. What if we also focused on getting people to do the highest quality work in the shortest possible time that's going to bring in the most money? So let's use an example. We could hire a VA for $15 or $20 an hour out of the Philippines, or probably even cheaper than that. And the VA is going to book our flights, check for meetings, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Or as um, as a, let's say that we have a rental company, we rent cars for um, luxury business owners and so on. Or we could get another mechanic in that's going to reduce the downtime of our cars, and that's going to bring in an extra hundred thousand dollars per year, or well, let's say two hundred thousand dollars, because the mechanic might be worth a hundred thousand dollars per year. So it's going to cost more to hire the mechanic. But because our cars are going to be properly maintained, there's going to be less downtime. 
more time that they're on the road, more time that they're available for rent, increased revenues, better customer satisfaction. Could we also go about it that way or are you sold on the fact that definitely go with the low budget tasks first? Is it set in stone really? No, I, so I, I love that idea. So here's, here's the only thing I'd, I'd you know, try to try to work through is like how, so for someone who's starting off, who's, let's say you're super busy and you have, you're making, mm-hmm. let's just use easy math, man. You're making, you're making a hundred grand a year net profit. How are you going to afford that new person? And some people mm-hmm. will take the leap. Like for instance, I see this a lot with salespeople. Um, they'll mm-hmm. say, Hey, um, I'm going to bring on these salespeople with the justification and the rationale that, this person is going to bring in X amount of dollars above what I'm, what I'm paying them. Like to the, to the mechanic example, like, Hey, I'm going to hire this mechanic for 80 grand a year and my expected turnaround time. And I've run the numbers and the data suggests that, that I'll make an extra, you know, $200,000. And remember, we always want, we always want a, at least a, a two X margin usually above what we're paying somebody, if not more for, for what their responsibilities are. And so yes. you, if you have that money, I love that idea because you could really catapult yourself forward and grow much quicker. The challenge I see is most people that I've run into don't yet have the ability to pay for that. Now you could talk about trading equity if you want to investigate that in the company, if you have somebody that uh, would be interested in that. And you know, you gotta be careful with that too. You don't want to you know, dilute your company too much. Um, yeah, it's true. But to your point, man, a true business mm-hmm only functions when you have highly capable people in the right positions. And so sure. you, you are, if you really want a business, uh, we're, on, we're on Turo, for instance, you're not going to want to be the one under the car. You're not going to want to be the one like go picking up, you know, picking up and dropping off cars. Like you're going to want a team of people. So I love that idea of having that person. It's just a timing issue. Like, can you afford to do it? Or are you willing to take that jump in the risk as to like my expected? And, and here's the other thing too, is like maybe – you're like, hey, I'm going to hire this mechanic and we're going to give it, I have enough money, I've saved up and I have three months saved up for a salary for mechanic and my projections indicate that over that three months I should make this much money and if it doesn't work, you just pull the plug. And so it's not like you have to make this huge commitment, um, but that you could do a test like that out of the gate that might give you a little bit of margin to see if this, mm-hmm. this, you know, this approach would work. Because um, yeah, it is, it is slower the approach I mentioned, number one, and quite frankly, the owner of the business isn't the right person for every job. Like, you know, you're, you're just not good at everything. I'm not good at everything. None of us are like, and so getting people that are truly experts, I think is an important part of that team building. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the equity idea is also a good thing to look into. If you can find the right people with the right mindset, I always, yeah. you know, you know, the thing that's quite fascinating a lot of times when you start in a business, and I hear a lot of people speak about this, they want to find the right person. So they're looking for a co-founder so they can get started. Or they're looking for an investor so they can get started. They're looking for the right person to do this specific job so they can get started. And I don't like that approach. You know why I don't like it? It's very simple. How do you know that this person is the right person for the job? And they're coming in to do such a critical role, a critical role that apparently the business can't be started without them. So now you tell me, if they're not a good fit and they leave, what happens to your business? It starts with you. So I also think that what you said in terms of evaluating your options and understanding if now is the right time at this price and are you willing to take that risk is also important. But we should also try to figure out where best we can spend our time for the highest returns. That might be the best answer here. Because yeah. maybe just maybe we can hold off on the VA. We can hold off on the mechanic. Because we suck at sales. Like we we are not selling <laughs> ice to someone in the desert. So maybe just maybe we do need to get in someone for sales. And then we can look at the other stuff. So maybe I do need to be the secretary for a while. Maybe I do need to be the errand boy for a while. Because then I have someone experienced and qualified answering the phone, um, connecting with leads, cold calling if that's what's necessary, et cetera, et cetera. Because that's the person who's doing the job I'm most terrible at. And that's the job that's going to basically cover my blind spot. So I think that's also a point that we can consider. What do you think? Yeah. No, absolutely. I'm, I, I, I could totally see that. And, you know, and so al- along those lines, like, you know, getting back to bringing on somebody else, like there are a lot of partnerships and employee 
agreements and contractors and things like that that don't work out or they work out for a period of time and then they and then they and then they they, they kind of like go by the wayside um it it's, it's much more complicated when you when you start trading equity because they're a lot they're a lot more difficult to get to get rid of if it's not going well and it can cause a lot of problems mm-hmm. um and so there's some there's some there's some wisdom there mm-hmm. you spoke about structure in your business to fit your ideal lifestyle. So if you want to travel, you yep. structure it in such a way that you can travel. So you might want to set it up that you can operate remotely. But before you even mentioned that, you mentioned automation. Now we all know about chat GPT. It's 2024. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't know probably is not going to know anytime soon. What they are they haven't found the... this podcast yet if they don't if they haven't heard of that. Uh, can I tell you? Because we have <laughs> done that. Here's the thing though. We are speaking about automation. What are some of your most popular and favorite automation tools for small businesses and startups? So I think there's there's a few pieces of a, if you look at almost any business, there are certain parts of that business that are represented almost in every business type and industry. So for instance, like, you know, lead gen. Uh, that is, if you, if you look at a customer journey, you know, you start off with lead gen, you turn those leads into prospects, the prospects become customers, customers become fans, and then those fans become referrals. And so at each of those stages, you can include automation. So for instance, Mm -hmm. like we use, uh, I'll use life in for example, we use keep, it used to be called Infusionsoft, um, costs us, I don't know, $150 a month. And I know I can get more out of that automation than I can any employee on this planet. And so there's no, there's no one I can hire at $150 a month that will get me everything I can do with the automation I've set up. So for instance, like, let's say, let's say you, I mean, it doesn't matter what the business is. You need to generate leads. Okay. How are you going to do that? Well, depending on the business, maybe it's going to be some sort of, it could be, it could be a promotion. It could be a lead magnet where you're providing information with a follow-up sequence a nurture sequence that's all automated. So like you, maybe you have a website, let's say you're, mm-hmm. let's say you're a real estate agent and you're, you're trying to attract leads. And so you can have a, an article on your, or, or a, a report, free report on your website that says like, Hey, top seven mistakes home sellers make when they are, when they're selling their house, which loses them big dollars or something like that. Right. And you, you put it in there and what you can do is educate a client build rapport, build trust, and then you can have them uh, give, give them a call to action in that. And so, so let's say in that call to action, now you have another piece of automation and you have a scheduling software. Now keep, keep has their own scheduling software, but some, some don't. So you have, so mm-hmm. you say, Hey, are you interested in selling your house? Or if I could be of, of any help to you schedule a call with me, I'd be glad to give you a free assessment of, of the value of your house. They book a call mm-hmm. with you, which is all automated. They get the reminders for that, for that, for that, mm-hmm. you know, call. Mm-hmm. From the call, you can now automate. You can automate the follow up and say, based on how the conversation went. And then let's say they become your client. Well, you know, uh, you know, as a real estate agent, there's a specific sequence of things that have to be done before you get to closing. Like, hey, we got to order the appraisal. We have to do title work. We have to get maybe get a survey. All of that can be automated, and you can link that back to an email to your client. And now you're emailing them like every few days or once a week with an update as to what's going on. Hey, here's the next step. And that's, that's all sequenced so that you don't have to do that. And so they're like, wow, this, this guy, this girl's really on top of it. And then you can get to the point where like after that closing, maybe you record a video with them and you take that now and, and they say, oh, you know, Sally was amazing. She helped us sell our house and we're moving now across whatever, right? The, the whole, the, the, the great success story. They take that now. Um, and then ask Sally for referrals. And she, she simply can give you a couple names of people and you plug that into the automation software and say, Hey, Sal, you know, Sally, this, you know, Sally um, said you might be interested in this and that's all automated. And you can create like a flywheel, essentially wow. all of this stuff to some extent automated, not, not all of it, but a lot of it. As much um, as possible. So, yeah. And like, and so, and the, the way I look at automation is, and automation isn't, it's not just external. It's not just customer facing or prospect facing, but there's, there's automation inside the company as well. Like for mm-hmm. instance, we use a lot of it within life. You know, when we're onboarding, onboarding new members, when we, yeah, yes. like onboarding is a huge place for it. That's a huge place for it. Um, mm-hmm. There new can be hires. some customer service applications. Yeah. 
you can, we, you know, we, we, we register people for our events with, with it's, it's all automated. Like before you come to an event, there's a whole, you know, several week sequence of things. We have them fill out a questionnaire that's automated. It gets sent to me. So I know what they need help with. And like, so there's all kinds of like automation that, that, that really should make the experience for the customer or the prospect better, not worse. Like I'm not talking about the 18 different numbers you have to dial when you call like for customer support and you have to try to get somebody in line and you're like, you're like yeah. rep, 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 and, you know, prison zero. Yeah. Right. That's not that. Like every business has those stages of, you know, getting mm -hmm. referrals, you know, building testimonials. Like here's another thing we do in life here is like, you know, every so often, um, at a designated frequency, they get an email that says, Hey, how's it going? Click here to let me know, you know, you're, and it's like a smiley face, a neutral face or a sad face. And then based on what they'd select, I get notified. Um, and it'll, it'll ask them to book a call with me. Like, Hey, I'm really sorry to hear that this isn't going as well as you'd hoped. I'd love to hear how we can make it better. It books a call with me yeah. automatically. Or if it's, if it's good feedback, it's like, Hey, would you mind sharing this with other people so that, you know, they can be inspired by your success as well. And that turns into a testimonial. So like, this machinery is moving all in the background because like we don't have time to do all this stuff with all of our clients and prospects, right? Like we yes. just can't. We, we want it would be great if we could, but we can't. I love how you've broken this down step by step. Not in the sense of do this, do that, but you do this would lead to that and it will lead to this step and it will lead to this step. Because you know what I'm looking at? We have two major resources in our, well, three. We have the human resource, we have time, and we have the trust. So we have three limited resources. I'm seeing here where automation solves all three because that automation step-by-step -step flow that you've listed with Keith, I believe it's called, Keith, that yep. can replace at least three employees and it's $150 per month. That also helps to eliminate the, mo the money concern because you're paying less and you're getting the same or even potentially even more value because it's automation. The quality is always going to be the same. So once it's optimized, you're good. And then there's a the knowledge. You might not know how to do all three jobs, how to set up the automation, but if you hire someone to get it done for you, they'll set it up properly, plug and play, and that's it. You go on from there. I want to put it to you that this period, not necessarily 2024, today, today, but you know, this period that we're living, the period of AI, computers, increased knowledge, because it's so easy to learn anything. You don't, to go to, you don't even need to go to university to become something like a data scientist or a software engineer. You go on YouTube yeah. or go to Codecademy or go to Udemy or Coursera. You can learn almost any skill. I believe that this is the best time to start a business because we have podcasts like this that brings the information to you. There are resources available online. There are wonderful people like yourself and Life on Air that's helping us understand that the dream is not necessarily to be a millionaire because, you know, that kind of gets overused sometimes. Make a lot of money and then I'll be fine. It's also living a fulfilling life. So you're working with a business owner and they have been, they have been making the money, you know. The money is coming in. They're wildly successful. And I know this is something that's happened to you as well. So maybe you want to share your personal story. So on the surface, everything's good. They got a the house. They got the car. They got the promotion. Or they have the business that's working. They have the trophy wife and the family. And everything that might be considered good in the eyes of Instagram beholders. But under the surface, there is depression. There is anxiety. Constant suicidal thoughts can't sleep at night, there's a next deadline not coming up, you're at dinner with the family and you have no idea what's been said because so many things are swirling around on you. How do you and Lifeoneer at this stage help such a business owner get to a more fulfilling, less stressful life? How do you do it? Man, the, fir the first thing we do is really, um, and this is, if you're making money you're probably working hard already. It's not an issue of work ethic. You're probably smart. Mm -hmm. It's really, I think in most times, well, it, I don't want to give one size fits all, but certainly many times I see that people haven't really given adequate time and focus to really, really, really what they want their life to look like. And I know that sounds simple, but like, you know, I'll, I'll ask somebody like, Hey, you know, what do you want your life to look like? And they'll be like, Oh, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I want a, I want a nice home paid for and like maybe, you know, fully funded college accounts for the kids. And like, you know, my Roth is, you know, 
you know, I got you know half million in my Roth. And I'm like, hold on, that's your balance sheet. Like, I want to know about your life. Like, and yeah. many times it's actually staggering. And and by the way, there's no judgment here because I was the same way. Like, but it's it's surprising as to how little time people really spend diving into the details. Like, how do you describe, you know, you want a great marriage. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Is it mean you guys are, you know, you, 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 you have date night once a week? Is it that you guys like feel like you can communicate freely and openly and without judgment or, and full accept and you can have full acceptance? Is it that you guys like are on the same page in your parenting? Is it that, you know, there's so many different variables here. And so mm -hmm. what I think happens is people don't have the life they want many times. And so they're good at business. They get rewarded for business and they just dive more into business because that's what they're comfortable with. And that's what they're, you know, rewarded and acknowledged for. And so the only reason is because they haven't found that fulfillment in their personal life. And so, you know, one of the things I think is really important is like for somebody who has all these surface level success, uh, by, you know, by worldly standards, like you know, all these signs, like is really to get them to unpack, like, what do they really want? Like, what do you really, really, really want? Like if, and what would your, what would your daily life look like? if you could choose everything you did and what if you couldn't work? What if you couldn't work for a moment? Let's just pretend you couldn't work. There's, there's a rule, you couldn't work. What would you do? How would you spend your time? Uh, like, what would you do, you know? And who would it be with? Where would you be? What would you experience, be, you know, do have? Like, and, and getting people to really unpack that. You know, Zig Ziglar said, um, most people spend more time planning a family vacation than they do their lives. And I, and I think it's true and so, the reason I start with that is because they have to recognize what they're missing before they'll make a change. Like I can just sit yeah. here and say like, Hey, you're out of balance and you're stressed and whatever, but, and, and the pain of that can help spawn that change, but they have to also have a hope and a vision for what's possible. Like they know they don't want what they have, but you have to yeah. show them a glimpse of what is what actually be. possible to inspire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, cause you, you can get away from the pain towards the pleasure. And now we have some, some, some traction, where we can start to really make some tangible changes in the business. I love that. A few, a few things came to mind, and the most glaring thought that came is perhaps the reason why we're like this is because that is what is celebrated. We live in an era where it's sad yeah. to say I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner, but a lot of time entrepreneurs, business owners, capitalists as well, they'll put it that if you just have a nine to five and you're not making a lot of money, then your life is a failure. But I don't see it that way. It's like they're saying that if you don't start a business and you're wildly successful, it's not what's good for you. And they also, this is something you see is multiplied a hundredfold on social media. It's always about the win. It's always about the success. And we don't spend enough time looking at the things that really matter. Let's say that you were to die tomorrow. How are you going to be remembered? Who's going to remember you within five years? Who's going to cry for you after three years? It's not going to be that client because they're going to get someone to do that Facebook ad for them or that website or that software. It's going to be a family that you brought into the world, a family that's looking forward to seeing you come home every evening. And I don't yeah. think we spend enough time, like you and Zig Ziglar rightly said, thinking about the life that we want to live. Because when you ask someone, so who are you? They don't tell you who they are. They tell you what they do. I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse, I'm an accountant, I'm right. an entrepreneur, as you would put it. They don't say, I am happily married, two kids, and I have a wonderful family, or yeah. I love to do this. They say what they do for a living, and that's a problem. What are your thoughts on the idea that maybe just maybe we need to do something to change what the ideal life as an entrepreneur is? The reason why I say this is because the... The vision right now is to start the business, get the capital from vent from VCR, get the first few customers, hit a hundred thousand or a million dollars per year, eventually yeah. sell and retire. And I don't think that's it. So perhaps we need to change that. Man, you are opening a can of worms here, my friend. Like, cause I can go on for a long time about this. So you said a lot of there's a lot of you dropped a lot of wisdom there. So let me let me touch on a few of these things. So first of all, like I totally agree that just our culture as it is, like, it's just, it's just, it's so easy to compare ourselves to others because it's what we see. You know, we don't, we, most of us don't see behind closed doors. You know, by the way, I, you know, I, my story is like, I, I had, I had three businesses plus a full-time job when I first, first started. 
I ended up going through a divorce. It was horrible. Um, but prior to that, on the surface, I mean, I had the three story brick home in the gated community. I was across the street from the metro, like, you know, and, and like everything mm -hmm. on the surface was great. Mm -hmm. And it, it was exactly what you described, though. Like, and I had, and, and by the way, there's also a, this took me a while to admit, but there's a selfish part of it for me that I, you know, I'd never, I had never netted six figures in a year before at that point in my life. And so there was a goal of mine and I was willing to sack and I, I, I was willing to sacrifice a lot for that. I didn't think it would be my marriage. I didn't think it would be my family. I thought it would be some time and some hard work. Like, Whoa. and so that's where like we make this terrible mistake. And so what mm -hmm. if though, to your point, like, what if we defi would define winning as, you know, whatever we want. So for somebody, it could be like, Hey, I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best wife. I want to be the best parent. I want to, who brings the most glory to God? Who can give away the most? Who can touch the yes. most lives? Whatever that definition is, live by that. Align your goals, actions, thoughts, and behaviors all around that versus this thing over here that, listen, you, you, your listeners probably already know this. At some point, another ten, twenty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 in your bank account doesn't make any difference. You don't feel a single lick of difference. And some of, I know some yeah. people, but by the way, I, when somebody told me that I was like, yeah, right. Let me, let me find out for myself. And, and, and I did, uh, and they were right. <laughs> and and I, yeah, I suffered exactly. a whole lot unnecessarily because of that. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think defining it our way, like, what do you really, and not, I understand like some social norms and pressures and the desire to keep up with the Joneses. But like, if you look at the Joneses, they're broke, they're out of shape, they're miserable. Right. And so yep. I think we've got to be a little mm -hmm. bit more careful about that. And social media has mm -hmm. made it a little bit worse because, you know, everyone's showing their highlight reel, you know, their, you know, let's call it fake book where everything looks yeah. like they're rosy, but like, and I listen, I've even had friends with this. Like I know what's going on behind closed doors yet. I'm seeing their picture of the vacation, like where I'm like, dude, that is not at all accurate. Like, and, and it, but everybody does it. And so when you start to believe that as being true, you start looking at yourself as a failure, what you're doing wrong. And then you're, mm -hmm. you kind of feel like you got to compete, you know, and, you're, you're competing at a, at a losing game. And we're, we're living in a society and a reality where it's always more. We have to do more, be yeah. more, have more, get more. And it's never good enough where you are. And like we said, social media exacerbates this because all of a sudden, normally your social circle is everyone in your community and two or three people from the neighboring towns. A hundred people at most, 200 if you're really popular. Now it's a million people. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat. WhatsApp, and that's six, and I haven't mentioned Twitter and LinkedIn. Those, that's, those are platforms with millions of people. No one on these platforms want to post that. Wow. Oh, today, I absolutely bombed this job interview. I can't believe it, but I'll be back. Right. I have another one in the morning. Right. Everyone want to post that. I got the dream job. I got the career, et cetera, et cetera. And you're there in your corner eating cold pizza under the, under the couch or under your sheets on the bed or something or on a coach and you're like, well, I am not doing anything with my life. Not realizing that for what you have achieved for your age and for your position is good. And the other thing that I want to put to you, um, Robert Kiyosaki and one of our guests, um, Stephen Barnes, they both say that you don't have to be the next Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley darling, as Stephen put it. What you need to do is start a business that covers your expenses and helps you to live the life that you want to live. Um, Tim Ferriss from the four hour work week, the four hour chef, the four hour body, the four hour brand, basically. He also said the same thing. He said that his business is just to fund his lifestyle. He doesn't need to have $200,000 to buy a Lamborghini. It costs like $1,400 per month to lease one. And that's all he needs to focus on making that 200 grand. And I think that if we can keep that into perspective, we can be honest with ourselves that maybe just maybe we don't need to make half a mil. Maybe just maybe we don't need to have a tech startup in Silicon Valley to be happy. Just being a chef or a baker and being able to take yeah. care of our family and be there when they need us. Maybe that's enough. Being healthy is enough. How much importance do we put on that stuff? Right, right. <clears throat> All of that is 100% true, man. And like, and and I am not telling anybody to live in poverty and, and you know, live, uh, or, or live on ramen noodles and save every penny and drive a beater. But at the end of the day, I think you really got to give a hard look is like, is this making me happy? And is this what I want? Or am I doing this because I feel like I have to make an impression or I have to impress someone or to feel a certain way, you know? Um, 
do, do you need, you know, and, and, you know, everyone's different. And I don't want to, you know, uh, make judgments, but like, and if you feel like you have to do this, then I would implore you to kind of like, look at like, why do I feel so strongly about, you know, about impressing others or, or feeling good about myself based on what I have? Um, Where is there I something a little deeper that I could, that. yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and by the way, like I have some toys, like, yeah, I got, I got a bunch of guitars. I have a, I have a street, uh, sorry, a track bike, a motorcycle. And, but mm-hmm. it's cause I, I love it and, and, and I enjoy it. And, and it's not because I feel like I have to kind of do something. And, and, um, you know, I'll tell you, man, most, most days I'm walking around my house and I'm outside, I'm wearing like a white V-neck t-shirt and everybody makes fun of me and that's okay. Like, cause I, I don't know. I don't, I don't get into clothes. Okay like, that. you know, that's not my thing, but maybe if it, yeah. if it is your thing, if you love it, go for it, but just be honest with mm-hmm. yourself, I guess. Do it for the right reasons. Don't do right. it for someone else. And you know, the thing that I want us to emphasize and reiterate just a bit, happiness comes from within. Ask yourself that question. And this is something I want all our listeners and our viewers to seriously look. Ask yourself that question. If I got the news that in 72 hours, I would be dead, what is it that's going to mean the most to me? And a lot of viewers don't know this, but, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, and, and you're a Christian, I'm a Christian as well. We're always, we always live with the mindfulness that we could be gone at any moment. And the older you get, the more this becomes a reality because your friends and acquaintances, they start to go as well. I believe that one of the most beautiful points in my life was just the other day. My computer stopped working, so I couldn't do any podcast interviews. I had just moved from where I used to live. I didn't have any internet, and I was disconnected completely. A lot of times, I sat in my apartment, nothing to do, and I just thought about it. And I decided that, you know what? I am missing a fulfilling life. Honest truth, you're the only person I've told this. I am missing a fulfilling life. And the reason why I'm missing a fulfilling life is because I'm working too hard. Yes, I love my business. Yes, I love what I do. But at some point, I need to slow down and I need to spend more time with my brother. I need to start a family. I need to, you know, that restaurant at that place with that meal that we always talk about that we never get to. I actually need to go there because it's time to start creating those memories so that whenever I'm permanently disconnected, I can't work anymore, or it's my time to step away from the business, it was not all a waste. And you see, just having those few weeks away because my computer crashed, like I said, no internet, just move on everything, just having those few moments away, it's really helped me to reshape my identity and my priorities. So maybe we just need to unplug sometimes, you know. Man, I'm with you, my friend. It's And, and I think we get we get so caught up in, on that treadmill that it's, it, it just goes by so fast and you don't, you don't take those moments. You don't make those realizations. Um, <clears throat> and it sounds, it sounds bizarre, but I think there's so much that we tend to miss if we're, if we're, if we're moving too fast. And when these forced kind of breaks occur, it can be a blessing. You know, it can be, it can be really like eye opening that, you know, what appears as an inconvenience, like on the surface, all of a sudden, has a much deeper significance and meaning to you because it, it, it opens your eyes to something that previously you kind of just like glossed over. That's powerful. That's powerful. Let's do it. So let's say that someone is listening, someone is watching, and they want to learn more about this fulfilling life that you have to offer because it's a real thing, you know, and sometimes unless it's brought to your attention. So sometimes we need to shed light on it for us to realize that, yes, this is what's been wrong. So let's say someone is listening, they're watching, and they'd like to get in contact with you, Jason. They'd like to have you speak to them and perhaps even help them to iron out the shortcomings in their lives. So it can be what life veneer expects it to be. How do they get in contact with you? If there are prices involved that you can share with us, what's the price? What's your process step by step to get in someone ready and started? And what can they expect? Yeah, the, the, the best place to start really, man, is, is to come out to the Get a Life Getaway event. Um, we have them virtual and we have a course, but I mean, just frankly, I don't think there's a substitute for being live in person because you realize very quickly you're in a room of, you know, 30 to 50 other people typically, and maybe sometimes more. And you realize that many people share the same struggles that you have and are faced with similar dilemmas and their circumstances and their, and everything that they're dealing with is, is not uncommon or unfamiliar to you. And so that, that 
kind of bonding of an acceptance of realizing like you're not alone is super valuable. Um, we, we do have, you know, sales for the get a life getaway fairly t- frequently. I think now you can get two tickets for like, you know, 497 bucks. Um, <clears throat> if you just go to life you'll see that. And the, the, the get a life getaway. And, and now by the way, we have, we have the get a life getaway and then we have the business builder workshop, but you know, especially based on the conversation we've been having, the reason why I want to suggest people go to the get a life getaway first is because that really helps you figure out tangibly you want in your life. Like what do you really, really want in every different area? So there's, it's three days long. We do a lot of exercises. We've had over 10,000 people go through that event. And it's something that we've really, we've really uh, crafted and and refined and honed that process. Um, That just, it makes it a whole lot easier that when you do go form your business, now you have an idea of what you're trying to, what you're trying to satisfy, what you're trying to complement. Some people do just go to the business builder first, because they're like, listen, I just need to, you know, I, I, I'll work out the vision stuff as I go. I'm not going to fight you on it. I think it's a better decision to go to the Get a Life Getaway. But if you have to go to the Business Builder Workshop first, that that's okay. And you know, we don't talk about we don't talk about business to Get a Life Getaway. We don't really uh, talk much about creating your vision at the Business Builder Workshop. The Business Builder Workshop is really, you know, how do you really remove yourself from your business? How do you how do you kind of structure something that can run without you? Um, and so there's 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 kind of this one two combination uh, for people. And then, and then from there, there are, you know, we have, we have continuing programs for people that want to get involved in coaching or masterminding. Um, but at the very least, like I would say, just get out to the events. You know, we do have a book, uh, it's called life in air. It's not a how to book at all. It's just, it's a story. It's a, it's a, it's a parable, um, which by the way, is kind of cool is like all of the stories in that book are true real life stories but we've just kind of put them into a storyline to actually make it flow. Oh, cool. Like cause in real life, there are different people that have done each thing, but we wanted to, you know, make characters and have it actually make sense. So it's a very quick read. It's, but it's, and it's, it's more of a, it's more of a perception changing book. Like it'll start making you think about work differently, success differently. What is prosperity? What is abundance? Like what is, you know, what is, what is success? And so, and so that's, that's, you know, you can get that on Amazon and that, that book's done really well. We've, you know, sold almost 60,000 copies of that. Um, and so that's probably the best way for people to start getting familiar with life in air. Now, of course we're on social media and you can, you can follow us in this, this comments and we have a, we have a Facebook group where people are mm-hmm. chiming in and supporting people and encouraging people. Um, and that's, that's, there's no charge for that, you know, just, just be part of the community of that wants to help other people succeed. Um, but that's, that's mm-hmm. probably the best place to, to do that. Um, cause those events are really, they're pretty, they're pretty incredible. But I'm from Jamaica. Right? I'm currently in Jamaica as well. So I would have gotcha, to go man. virtual. Yeah, gotcha, so gotcha. Go virtual. And <laughs> well, yeah, man. Well, someone that's been in the States. Gotcha. Well, we'll get you, we'll get you plugged in. And listen, some people are like, Hey, I got like 18 kids and 14 dogs and it's like impossible for me to leave. I'm like, listen, <laughs> totally cool. That's your vision. Like just, you just gotta, mm-hmm. you just gotta dial in and make sure you're, you're staying focused on the, on, on the, on the virtual version of it. Cause I mean, you know, I know, mm-hmm. I know me, I'm a little bit like more like ADD where I like I just stay in, staying still for three days or, you know, a long period of time, the computer can be a little more challenging, but like, listen, if you're, mm-hmm. you can do that, you're, you're a rock star. You can absolutely get some huge value from it. Just do something differently is what you're saying. Basically do mm-hmm. something differently, get started with the virtual better if you can do it in person and then you go from yeah. there. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, the big, is the there thing, anything? I, I was Please. just saying, well, man, you just said something I really want to just make sure everyone heard, like just Mm -hmm. get started, you know, Mm -hmm. and I, I've heard this, I don't know who said this, but I've always remembered it. It says like, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And so you, this is so, this has been such a theme for me, whether it's in business, whether it's in life, whether you, whether you're 40 pounds overweight and you want to lose half a pound, like literally right now, go and walk, around your neighborhood for 10 minutes, go do something. You want to get a business going? Cool. Like do something like you want to, you know, work on your relationship, do something. Yeah. Say hi to that girl. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Don't wait. Like, and especially man, like, um, I turned 50 this year and oh, congratulations. Thanks man. I'm, I'm having, I'm literally having people around me. Like what you said earlier, like, you st- when you're listen, when I was in my twenties, I didn't think about this stuff. Maybe not even my thirties, but like forties, I started thinking about it. Like I'm seeing mm-hmm. people pass away just within life and air. This past yeah. year, we lost a coach who is 39 mm-hmm. years old 
never woke up. He, he, he died in his sleep. Um, wow. so I'm seeing this more and more. And this is why, like, I'm so passionate about this is like, it's not just about the money. It's not just about real estate. It's not just about business. It's about like living every moment fully and recognizing like what you said earlier is like, none of us are promised tomorrow. Like, and I know that sounds so cliche, but it's so true. And you all, all you have to do is have a couple people close to you pass and it starts to really sink into how, how true it really is. Mm-hmm. And that's, um, having a coach pass away. And it's only, I think today is the 16th or the 15th. Or is it 16th? The 16th of January as we're recording this. That helps you to stay in touch with reality. And like you said, you don't have to be great to start. Well, you have to start to be great. Sometimes you just need to get that first foot in. Get that first move done, completed. Build up momentum from that. It doesn't have to be something big. It can be as simple as putting away that Twinkie that you're going to eat. You know you're not supposed to eat it. Or smiling at that person you're attracted to. Do something. Totally true. I am um, thankful that you shared this with us. It's it's quite it's quite fascinating. It's it's deep and it's very meaningful. Is there um anything that I didn't touch on, I didn't mention that would have liked me to talk about quite a bit before we end the podcast today? The only the only one thing I would I would add, <clears throat> and this is not gonna be for everyone, mm-hmm. but if you're a person of faith. Yes. One of the things that Life and Air has recognized and that we that is kind of like a subtle undertone to what we do is that I believe, and again, not everybody's going to believe this, and that's okay, you can have the time, you can have the money, you can have the relationships, mm-hmm. you can have the health, you can have all of the worldly things you want, but many times you'll also experience the consistent lack of a sense of like, there's like, there's something missing. Like there's still something missing. And I believe that it's that relationship with your creator that is calling to you to explore. And so this is where like, you know, a lot of times, for instance, people will come into life and air and we'll help them make the money. Like that, no problem. We've seen it a thousand times. We'll, we'll free up their schedule. They're working, whatever, 20 hours a week, 15 hours a week. Their relationships are great, but they mm-hmm. still feel like something's missing. And that's where, like, that's the opening that I think as a suggestion, I'm like, hey, have you thought about this? Maybe look into this. That's all I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to tell anybody what to believe, but it may be an indicator that, like, mm-hmm. I think all the things I mentioned are a worldly way to feel meaning and purpose. But really what you're looking for is a spiritual way. You're looking for that only a spiritual, you know, um, mm-hmm. o- only a spiritual means can satisfy that need. And so, so that's just one other thing that some people may resonate with. Yes. And I've also found that as you grow older, family and faith become important. In stressful times, those who have some sort of faith, some belief in a higher power that's in control of everything, they also tend to, I wouldn't say they do better, but I think they get through difficult moments a lot easier because of that. And that's something that um, I can speak about from experience when I lost my mom a few years ago to cancer as well. It was my faith, my relationship with God that really helped me to put that into perspective. Some people are going to say, no, God doesn't exist. Or some people are going to say, yeah, God exists, but I don't know if it's actually God that's that supreme being. For me, it's God. Yeah. And for me, it's the one that's brought me through a lot. So that's definitely something that we should look into if it's, you know, yeah. if it's up or other. We're not forcing anyone to become religious or spiritual. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I just, Hey, I just, Hey, I encourage you to explore it. Right. And, and see mm-hmm. if it makes sense. See if it, see what you feel like, you know, that's, that's between you and God. Like you got, I'm not trying to convince you of anything, yeah, but God. like, you know, you, but just, just consider that as a possibility. <laughs> that's good. I agree with that. How did you enjoy your time today on a boardroom podcast, Jason? Man, loved being here. I really appreciate the, the, uh, the opportunity to chat, man, and getting to know you as well. I had a wonderful time as well. This is one of those talks that we need to have more often and get out there. Make this the primary message because then when we get to a point in life where we're doing enough, we'll be more proud of ourselves and we won't feel like we're not measuring up because the Joneses look like they're doing better. And they only look like they're doing better. Um, Given your time on the Boardroom Podcast today, and this is a traditional question we always ask all over again. Given the time that you've had on the Boardroom Podcast today, what's so who is one guest that you would like to see on the Boardroom Podcast in the future? And for this guest, what is one question that you would like us to ask them for you? Let's see here, man. Hmm, interesting. I think um, mm-hmm. 
I dude, I would I think it would be cool if you ha- uh to have Alex Hermosi on. Oh yeah. Ask, Alex is cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, ask him um some of the questions about around around faith th- and time that um that and how he views things cuz he has a very different perspective on many things. He's he's much younger than me. <clears throat> very successful, very successful guy. Um and I'm curious to see how if at all that has changed as he's become more, more successful, success, more, more I mean, cause he doesn't need any more money. You know, he doesn't need any more money. And so where, where is this coming for him? And, he, and I know he talks about loving the game and, mm-hmm. and loving, you know, what he does and which is, is awesome. It's living his vision, but are there other parts of his life that he's feeling like are calling to him as he's kind of like checking those boxes? And specifically you're asking if, as he's grown, you know, time has progressed. If he's feel the need to connect more with other parts of his life, has become more successful yeah. as well. Yeah, that's um, a brilliant question. Believe it or not, Alex Armos is the number one request that we've had. I think this is the fifth, and we've had some wonderful oh, questions really? asked. Oh yeah, it's um, I'm definitely looking forward to connecting with Alex in the future. And to yeah. that point, because of the nature of our conversation, definitely a panel with um, Lyle Armos as well would also be really good. Oh so yeah, looking well, forward yeah, to yeah, that. yeah. Mm-hmm. Jason, thank you for your time. Awesome, today. Man. You've been brilliant. You've been wonderful. We'd definitely love to have you on again in the future for one of those um, panel discussions. And we can just talk about living a fulfilling life and um, yeah, getting ourselves out there for who we are, not for who we think we need to be. You know, this is something that's important, like I said. Love it, man. Really appreciate the opportunity. It's been, been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you, Jason. Stay tuned until next time, guys. I don't know who's next, but we'll see you in the next episode. Take care until next time. Cheers.